We uh, discovered the actions of spleen on immunity many, many years ago during my doctor's studies in the 1980s, even in the end of the 80s. And what we essentially discovered was that it had a unique capacity to protect anti-leukemic effector cells, such as T cells and NK cells, against inactivation. So we were inspired to proceed to animal experiments and eventually started clinical trials using spleen. Uh, preferably in AML, we actually published the first results. I think it was in about nine or seven patients already in 1996. We um, proceeded to a phase two trial, as always, in, done in Sweden at the University of Gothenburg and at the Karolinska University Hospital in Stockholm in about 30 patients. And we were encouraged by the results and proceeded to a phase three trial that was eventually published around 2006 in 320 patients. And that trial met the primary endpoint of preventing relapse of AML. And that is the core of spleen therapy, namely to prevent relapse once patients have undergone chemo in the initial phases of AML. As I said, it's a protective agent and in more detail it targets an immune checkpoint called NOx2, which is expressed by a variety of myeloid cells uh, monocytes, granulocytes, even malignant monocytes and granulocytes. These cells inactivate cellular immunity in the form of T cells and NK cells by producing immunosuppressive compounds. And what Supreme very simply does is to prohibit or inhibit that uh, immunosuppressive action. By doing that, you can use immunoactivating agents such as IL-2 at low doses, and then you will have a very good activation in patients. What we have done over the past year is just to monitor which aspects of immunity are relevant to patients with AML. And uh, we have published at this conference, uh, for instance, data suggesting that cytotoxic T cells that may be accumulating during therapy with supine and IL-2 and uh, natural killer cells are pivotal effector cells to patients. Overall, there is a 50% increased likelihood of leukemia-free survival at three years but the effect is much higher in subgroups, such as younger patients, patients in their first complete remission, etc. But the most recent development is that we tend to take, a more, uh, interest, take more interest in what molecular types of AML may or may not be responding. And the data that we have as of present is that um, certain good prognosis markers, such as nucleophosmin, and other markers, MPM1, uh, the, the action of spleen seems to be pronounced in those patients. And I think that is interesting because the MPM1 positive patients, that's a very common mutation in AML, uh, but there is no targeted therapy for MPM1 and there is no benefit uh, of transplantation in terms of overall survival. It's considered to be a good prognosis marker in AML, but still a large proportion of patients will in fact relapse also with this. I mean, that tells you the severity of AML diagnosis that even patients with relatively good prognosis are at risk for relapse.